This is one chapter of a long production of the Western Pacific Railroad history. This chapter covers the revolutionary FT diesel to the evolutionary F7 diesel, and ending with WP's rail fan favorites, the final four F7 diesels. Yard Switcher 603 is a 1952 built EMD SW9 that is typical of units that replaced smaller steam locomotives for this task. Gone with steam was the extra maintenance and water tanks, turntables and firemen to keep them under steam. The diesel could perform all day and require a little else beyond occasional refueling. This very location where SW9 number 606 prowls once had a large roundhouse and turntable with at least three large water tanks to keep steam locomotives ready for duty. All that began to vanish with dieselization 50 years ago. The FT was EMD's first road locomotive that had a standardized design approach. The WP's touch added the high number boards, a reminder of how steam locomotives once looked. These units had their problems, but future EMD models added improvements to dynamic brakes, traction motors, and electrical systems that WP can take much credit for initiating. Everything you see is anachronistic today. Refrigerator cars that needed re-icing frequently and the early diesels that changed so many jobs. Wooden cabooses, jointed track, and eventually all cabooses would disappear. Time would run out for these Pioneer diesels and the original four-unit sets were often broken into mated pairs and finally as trade-ins for newer power, all would be gone by April 1967. The future in road power was held by the boxy Jeep models such as these Jeep 20s. This is 1972 during the last full decade of WP independence and we find a 1950 built F7 number 918D in Stockton, California, waiting for another assignment. Its Western Pacific nose emblem is completely worn off from the years of service. F units like this one reduced Western Pacific's expenses and improved their performance to customers and, of course, helped eliminate steam. This advertising poster from 1951 boasted of a 98.35% on-time record for time-sensitive perishable goods in 1951, and the rapid Western Pacific dieselization was one important reason. Here in 1974, we find the same 918D on the point of this train after 24 years of service, and it will keep going to reach 1980. The Western Pacific bought all its F7s in 1950 and 1951 after cutting its teeth on the FT locomotives delivered in 1941 through 1944. Right behind the F7 is three-year-old number 3527, a fresh GP40 with double the horsepower and a turbocharged 645 series diesel. A sister F7B unit, 918B, was traded in in 1971 to EMD to help build 3527. The next unit is 2004, a Jeep 20 of 2,000 horsepower built in 1959 and with a somewhat rare high short hood. The Jeep 20 was the first EMD turbocharged production locomotive and it used the same basic 567 series diesel the F7s all used. 
The last unit is F7 number 913, another survivor. It will be one of the four last F units running on the Western Pacific in a few more years. The FT locomotives mentioned earlier were the EMC-built predecessors to the sturdy F-7. The Western Pacific managed to buy a dozen four-unit sets during World War II. Even though locomotive deliveries were controlled by the War Production Board due to scarcity of manufacturing capacity, the Western Pacific needed all the power it could get then, and one last steam purchase was reluctantly made for a six-unit order of these GS6-class Lima-built locomotives. They were intended to be delivered to the Southern Pacific, and they would have looked like this SP version if the order hadn't been diverted. The F unit was the reason that many of Western Pacific's facilities could be simplified in the 1950s. The old San Jose facility shown here in the mid-1950s was being dismantled. Roundhouse, turntable, water tower, and all. The story repeated itself all over the system. The Western Pacific's determination to dieselize was based on the notion that diesels would cut fuel and maintenance cost of locomotives to a third of what steam would cost. The old EMC sales literature read by Western Pacific engineering and accounting departments alike promised more work, lower costs, and bigger profits, and they delivered on that promise. The early four-unit sets of FTs were rated at 1,350 horsepower for a total of 5,400 for a set of four. They had their share of problems, but these would be worked out in time. The literature also promised that all the expensive support services of coal docks, water stations, and treatment facilities, cinder pits, boiler washing, and fire cleaning, and the associated labor could be eliminated. The EMC claim of a new milestone in transportation progress was no idle boast. The later F3s were chosen to run the Western Pacific's California Zephyr, and the WP bought these in 1947. They were rated at 1,500 horsepower each, just like the F7 horsepower figure, but the F7s were a more refined unit. The F3s were equipped with optional steam boilers to heat passenger cars operated until the end of the California Zephyr when most were traded in for GP40s in 1971. We'll review the California Zephyr more later on. F units, often called covered wagons due to their shape, represented a concerted effort to blend style with industrial function. basic car body shell was a structural item not unlike the unitized construction of certain automobiles. Take away the shell and the structural strength is diminished. The styling made heavy maintenance more labor intensive and that needed to work on a more contemporary GP model. Diesel motors were removed through the roof hatches for access to major components. One thing the crews liked was the good unobstructed forward visibility. They were also sitting higher above the rails, which improves the view over undulating terrain, and the little extra height somehow seems a bit safer in a road crossing mishap. Reverse moves in this type of locomotive had visibility problems. The days of the F unit continuing in an ongoing development of newer models was, however, coming to a close by the time the F9 was offered by EMD. Leaving Stockton, we'll visit the endpoint of the Western Division at Oakland, California. The final leg of the westbound's trip included a bit of street running down Oakland's 3rd Street. This is one of the penalties of building a railroad after the city is built up. Way back in 1909 when the line was built, the Western Pacific was lucky to get even a toehold on any way into Oakland. Since the SP Empire had already sewed up most of the land, 
and access to the shoreline on the bay. small cramped western pacific yard was never very fancy and our freight cruises into it with the oakland berkeley hills visible in the background the brakeman runs ahead of the train to set the switches in proper alignment and eliminate the need to stop and restart the train WP diesels are way past their prime in 1974 on this San Jose turn in the Ultimate Pass. These four F7 units were by then members of the final six units, all built in 1950. By September 1975, the F unit fleet was reduced down to four units from over 100, which once included FTs, F3s, and F7s in both A and B cabless booster units. The number 913 shown here was equipped with a snowplow and was often used in snow clearing duties on the line to Bieber. The rounded noses of F units worked better than the blunt front of Jeep models with their front steps that tend to pack with snow. shows all the years of wear on every square inch of paint here at Stockton, when it still carried the suffix letter A on its number boards. Most railroads would have surrendered units this old as trade-ins or simply for scrap, but the Western Pacific could still put them to good use on the San Jose turn between Stockton and San Jose and save the cost of new units for a few more years. These units were always good pullers, and the simple non-turbocharged 567 motors were good for 6,000 horsepower in a set of four units. More than enough for a train running from Stockton to San Jose. Rail fans paid special attention to these final four units, and they were relieved and surprised when the WP decided to refurbish the four, and even painted number 913 in the classic orange and silver paint as a morale boost for the employees and trackside admirers alike. All these scenes were shot on film by rail fans who knew the clock was running down on these F units. These were the last four F units operating in regular service in California. 
with new paint and improved mechanical conditions, the four F7s helps WP celebrate its 75th anniversary. But in a few more years, the F units would be gone and the Western Pacific as well. The Union Pacific would claim the Feather River route as its own prize. Look for the entire story of the WP's history on this fine DVD production, and be sure to visit our website for many more railroad stories.